In this session, we're going to look at environmental challenges, specifically of international management. When we talk about uh, the challenges from a sustainability point of view, we need to look at the levels of international business activity. So at some point, the, you have a sort of a progression from the lowest levels of international activity to the highest levels of international activity. Now, what are we referring to here and what does this mean? We have some businesses which are commonly stated to be domestic business. Then from there, in terms of growth, you go into international, you go into multinational and ultimately to global. So you can kind of hear in the, in the, in the naming of the size of these businesses or the focus rather of these businesses that there's a progression almost from smaller to larger and henceforth it states there that the level of international activity moves from the lowest to the highest. What does this mean? What does it mean for sustainability? Well before we can ask that answer that question we first need to just talk a little bit more about what's the difference between uh, domestic and international multinational and global businesses. When we look at domestic, primarily it is a business that gets everything that it needs from the local environment. So there you can see it acquires all its resources, all its resources that it needs, and it sells its product within a single country, single region. So it's domestic by nature. It does not get from somewhere else and it does not sell to somewhere else. It's country bound. International, normally it means that it's based in a single country, but it acquires from somewhere else, and it might also sell from somewhere else. As it states there, the full share of its resources or revenue, or both, from other countries. So there you can see it's still sort of country-bound in terms of where it's situated, but there's drawing of resources from other areas, and there's also selling into other areas. That's the first difference. Next, we look at multinational and then the progression to global. So when we talk multinational, this is one that has a worldwide marketplace, worldwide marketplace from which it buys or acquires raw material, it borrows money, and it also manufactures on various different parts of the continent. So definitely not country bound anymore. Uh, it's operating it's uh, getting funding, it has shareholders and markets in a variety of places across the globe. Hence, the terminology or the description there of being multinational. And then we get to the last one, which is global. Now, a global transcends national boundaries. It's not committed to a single home country. So if we look at this progression, we have domestic, we have international, we have multinational, and then we ultimately have global. And as you can kind of guess, their impact will be different on the environment because they're operating on a larger scale. So that is what we need to look at. There's the lowest level of international activity, as I this explained just now, and that progresses to the highest level. So domestic, international, multinational, and global. It's important to understand these differences because the impact on the environment would be different, henceforth the way in which I'm going to manage my environmental impact in a domestic organization and in a global organization needs to be different. And that's what we basically need to look at. What are the challenges that we're talking about in terms of sustainability, specifically relating to environment, the environmental challenges of international management? large organizations operating today, operating today on a multinational, a global scale. What are the challenges? Well, there's three challenges that sort of the main challenges that these organizations have being the economic environment that they operate within. The second one would be the political environment that they operate within. Um, regulation, legislation might be different. That comes to mind. And then, of course, the cultural environment. Because if you sell your products globally, multinationally, it's the same product, but it's sold in different regions, uh, it's manufactured in different parts of the world, so certainly there's some cultural boundaries, limitations and challenges that coincide with that. Now, these are specifically the managerial functions that we're looking at. First, in terms of economic, you have to understand the economic system, not just in uh, the 
country of origin, but also in the other countries that you operate within. You need to understand the capacity of natural resources. How much do I have? How much do I not have? And where can I gain access uh, to natural resources should I acquire more? What's the impact thereof? I need to understand that as a manager. And then, of course, infrastructure. What do I have? What do I not have in terms of infrastructure? Normally, when we look at organizations, we look at four generic uh, resources. We look at information, infrastructure, people, and finance. So infrastructure here yeah, very important in terms of the management function to understand that. On a political level, government stability, political stability, the region that I'm operating within, uh, are there any dangers to my staff uh, or to my employees, uh, my customers in terms of the region that I'm operating within? And what are the incentives for international trade? Uh, a lot of times organizations, for instance, maybe I want to manufacture something uh, more cost effectively. And it's more cost effectively for me to uh, manufacture it in a different part of the world, maybe a China or India or South America. But if, I, if, I, if, if governments want to attract investment in those regions, typically they offer some kind of a incentive. And that, as a manager, you need to know what it is and understand that. And then, of course, also look at the economic communities that you're going to operate within. The last one being cultural is probably the most difficult uh, in terms of managerial ability, and in terms of what it is that you need to manage. Because uh, economic environment, you can find out most of those things. Political environment, you can find out most of those things. But on a cultural level, you're kind of dealing with people. And we are all different, all individuals, all unique in our own way. So you need to understand the value, values, the systems, the beliefs, and the language. Why is this important? Well, because the same word might have one meaning if expressed in English, it might have a different meaning if, express, in, if expressed in Arabic, as an example. So you, you need to be very clear and very careful in terms of understanding what terminology means in different parts of the world. Symbols often has led to uh, maybe some uh, disgruntlement uh, amongst customers when there's a symbol that you're using in one part of the world, it has no specific meaning, in another part of the world it does. So you have to understand those, the beliefs and the languages of the region that you're going to operate within. And that's what, I'm, what, what, what it says here at the bottom, this individual behaviors across cultures, probably one of the most challenging and difficult uh, managerial abilities that you need to have in terms of environmental challenges. Thank you.